Hi, I am Pete Gerlach. I am the author of the Break the Cycle educational nonprofit website that you may be looking at, or I hope you do. The website's composed of eight self study lessons. The second lesson is about how to improve your thinking and communication skills. I'm a professional therapist. I've been one for 31 years. I've been studying interpersonal communication for 40 years. What I'm about to summarize for you is the culmination of all that study. I've worked with scores and scores of troubled couples, parents and kids, business people. What I observe is that many people are unaware of how to communicate effectively, but in particular, how to problem solve together, cooperatively. I want to summarize for you what I've learned about problem solving in hopes that you'll become more aware of how you do it and maybe how to improve how you do it. Let's start by saying or asking what is a problem? In interpersonal terms, in social terms, what is a problem? I propose that all human behavior is driven by needs or discomforts, physical, emotional, spiritual discomforts. A problem, quote unquote, exists when relative to another person you have one or more discomforts or needs that are unfilled. So that's what a problem is. Problem solving then becomes identifying your needs and filling them. Sounds simple, right? Yet many people aren't aware of this process and don't know how to do it. What are the requisites to do effective problem solving? Effective means getting your needs met in a way that pleases you and the other person you're with. The very first requisite is awareness. That's the first of seven skills in lesson two in this website. Develop your awareness. The second skill is use awareness to dig down and uncover what do you need. If you're having a problem with a child, a teen, an adult, a co-worker, a parent, a sibling, a stranger, what do you need? That's not as simple as it sounds. It's the subject of another video and another article on this website. But you need awareness in order to solve problems. The second major requisite you need is to have your true self guiding your personality. If you've read and studied lesson one in this website, you'll know what that means. In my experience, including my own personal experience, a high percentage of typical adults, well-educated, mature adults, are guided by or controlled by a, quote, false self. Um, if you are guided by a false self attempting to problem solve with another person in a satisfactory way, often will fail. So you need to be aware, and one of the things you need to be aware of is is your true self guiding your personality. Lesson one will show you how to do that. If you've got these true requisites and you use awareness and digging down skill, one of the seven communication skills, to determine, well, what do I need right now? What's the problem? Then you can, with another person, do the following steps. Ask if they're willing to problem solve with you. It's highly likely they won't, they'll say sure, but they don't know what that means. Explain to them, what I'd like to do is find out what you need from me right now. And then I'd like to let you know what I need from you right now. And then I'm going to invite you to brainstorm how can you and I get our needs met in a way that feels good enough to both of us. That's what problem solving is. Incidentally, 
prerequisite I did not mention but should have, before you do what I just said, you need in your own mind to have established a what I call an equal equal attitude towards your partner, whoever she or he is. You have to believe they are equal to you in dignity and worth, no matter what their position in life, what their background is, their age, their gender, their maturity or lack of it. They are equal in integrity and worth to you. Their needs are just as valid as yours, unless you're in an emergency. Important uh, variants. So, yourself is in charge, you're aware of that, you're aware of what you need, and you have a mutual respect or equal equal attitude. Then, ask the other person if he or she is willing to problem solve. If they say no or not right now, you can suspect that a false self is controlling them. That's a separate issue. If they say, well, sure, what do you have in mind? Ask them what they need from you right now. Tell them what you need from them right now. Ask them to repeat back to you what they heard to make sure they heard correctly. If they did, then say, let's brainstorm. Many times what I've observed is people, especially if they're controlled by false selves, think there are only two alternatives. Do it my way or, quote, the highway. Agree with me or don't. That is a fallacy. It's a reality distortion. There are always more than two options. So invite the other person to brainstorm, no matter how nutty or how weird the options are. A quick illustration of what brainstorming is. It's a true story. A farmer outside a large um, city in Canada put up uh, a great billboard in the pasture where his cows were grazing advertising his farm. Some civic officials came by and said, no, 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 you're breaking the law. You cannot put billboards next to a highway uh, the way you have. You must take it down. Well, the farmer wanted to abide by the law. He also wanted to publicize his farm's products. He brainstormed and he wound up painting advertisements on the side of his cows. That is creative brainstorming. You and the person you're having a problem with can do similar outside-the-box thinking to come up with strange, wonderful, and weird ways that you each can get most of your current needs met. That is problem solving. It involves using all six of the others communication skills that you'll find in lesson two. If you can't name them yet, you should study lesson two. Um, compare what I just outlined to how you normally attempt to solve interpersonal relationship problems. Common blocks or common alternatives to problem solving. See if you do any of these. One is shut down. Just emotionally numb out and quit. I can't do it. I, I won't speak, I won't talk, I won't listen to you, we have an impasse. Another is to become aggressive and try and force your needs on the other person. That's lose-lose, as you know. Another is to whine. Oh, I wish things were so bad. Gee, it would be nice if you... How about complain? How about blame? When, uh, lots of people are fond of saying, it's your fault, you know, if you would only blah, blah, blah. So there are many alternatives to effective problem solving. None of them are win-win where both people get their needs met. They usually make the relationship worse. Become aware of your process. How do you try to resolve problems with children, with teens, and with adults? How do you do it? Communication often becomes the problem. I hope uh, this concept is clear to you. Putting it into practice is a challenge for many people. If you want to improve your success at resolving, or for that matter, avoiding 
interpersonal problems with people who are important to you in your life. Study lesson one about freeing your true self. Study lesson two about seven powerful communication skills anyone can learn when they're ready to. One of them, all, all seven, lead to effective problem solving. I hope you'll consider improving how you do that. The people around you will appreciate it. If you can teach your kids how to problem solve effectively, that's a major step towards breaking the psychological wounds and unawareness cycle, which is the reason for my website. If, as you study these lessons, you have any questions or feedback or suggested improvements, criticisms, comments, praise, what a concept, um, please use the contact link at the bottom of every web page. Let me know what you think or want or suggest. Uh, if you want to contact me directly, I can do that too. I hope this little video uh, leaves you questioning. How do you go about problem solving and what would happen if you intentionally took steps to improve your process? I hope you do. Thanks for watching.